Hello, screenwriters, and welcome to Writing for Screens. I have thoughts, transitions. My name is Glenn Gers, and I am the chief executive everything of Writing for Screens. I come to you live, when I click the button, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time Zone, if I can make it to uh, do various classes on uh, writing, especially screenwriting. Um, but the main thing I do on my channel to teach screenwriting is actually in the first three playlists on my channel. The first three from the top, you can see them here in a sample screen grab. This is more detailed. The three playlists at the start are entitled Screenwriting Essentials, screenwriting tools, skills, and craft, and the process, being a writer. Those are full of screenwriting lessons, 10 minute videos that I have made, 10 to 12 to eight videos that I've made on a specific topic. There is no grand theory. I don't believe that there is such a thing as a grand theory of screenwriting. So I have just tried to take on topics and tell you what I know techniques, tools, skills, things I've learned from experience in a 25 year career writing for TV and movies. I gave each uh, of these lesson videos a title which tells you what it's about and a thumbnail that says in bright colors what it's about so that you can just browse these things. There's about 30 of them now. I hope to have about 50 when I'm done. This is where the good stuff is, the juicy, direct, simple stuff, because I believe that the main thing to teaching writing is to show you skills and tools and you try them out and decide which ones are good for you because everyone has to work their own way. Everyone has their own vision of what kind of work they want to do. I can't tell you how to do that. All I can tell you is these are some things I learned when teaching myself in the past 30 years how to do this, did it professionally, found some things that helped me. I am passing them on to you on my way out of the business. And then I come on live streams uh, partly because it's fun, it's nice, I get to, to interact with people, and also because there's topics that need a fuller, more than the 10 minutes, talking about sort of general questions, maybe showing you with uh, sharing my screen in a script, stuff like that. So that's what we're doing here today. We're gonna to talk about transitions, but first we're gonna talk about saying hello to people. Hi, Nathan. Hi, Phil J. And Michael. Anthony, good to see you. Mukesh, I have not, uh, yeah, I was gonna say, I have, not, I have not met you yet. Very nice to meet you, hello. Glad that you have been watching, that's great. Morbo, hello. Henry, uh, it is great to be seen live. Please feel free to ask questions. And Dendral, hey, how are you? Been a while, hope you are doing okay. Okay, let's get into the main topic here, which is transitions. Um, I'm going to, to read to you. I've, got, I've gotten a bunch of questions about this. Whoopsie. Let me break that out. Okay. So uh, a bunch of questions about this. Let me read some of them to you so you get an idea. Have you ever talked about scene transitions? What types of transitions you used in scripts and what do they mean? How do you format transitions? Which of those transitions really matter? So with all that in my mind, um, and thank you to those of you who asked things. Um, hi, Kelly. Uh, <laughs> I know it's important because I don't know it, yet appreciate those lovely live streams. Thank you. That is great. Hi, Maisie. Good to see you. And you, Hyperabs. Good to... Okay, so let's talk about transitions for a while. Um, and then, of course, I will be open to questions. Uh, the main thing is, first of all, what are transitions? Transitions are the changing from one scene to the other thing. It's the uh, another scene. It is the first thing in a scene and the last thing in a scene, which uh, when placed next to each other, that's the transition, the way out of one scene and into the next scene. Um, so that's a definition of transitions. Um, I have talked about how to format them in one of my longer uh, lesson videos called Script Format Made Easy. 
and I will put a link to that in the description. I highly recommend checking it out, um, but I'm also going to talk to you about them here. Um, but yes, the, the point is there are um, a set of transitions. There is also a formatting element called transitions. Um, so I will show you that. Um, let's just let's just quickly uh, take a quick look at the transitions here. Hang on. Okay, so this is a script. It's it's the old Crime Cracker script. Okay, so it, at the end of this scene, Madeline says, good work today. She's heading for the door. Then the next scene is Brenda is already going down in the elevator when Madeline gets in. So she's leaving an office and going to the elevator. Now, Sometimes you want to put a, a transition in between those scenes, and there is a, an element called transition, and that's formatted over to the right side in all caps, and it would be dissolve to. See, there's one of them. Um, but we are now going to talk about why that's generally not a great idea to do. <laughs> so let's talk. Um, hello, this is Kitchy. Good to see you. Um, okay, so these are the main types of transitions that one would find in a film. There is the cut. Sometimes people write hard cut or smash cut or all sorts of descriptive cuts. Um, there's also such a thing as a jump cut. Um, the other main transitions are fade in, fade out, or dissolve, or wipe. I honestly can't think of any other transitions that would come up. If you know of some, please let me know, ask about them. I will be happy to tell you what I think. Let's talk about these different types of transitions. The first one to know is that cut, hard cut, smash cut, and jump cut are all the same thing. They're cuts. <laughs> A cut is simply when you are in one shot and they literally cut the film or in the old days or now end the the uh, that file and go to the next file of the next clip um, and they are put right up against each other so because of the way that uh, visual motion works in film you essentially just blip you you just cut you are in one place and then you are in another I can't show you one of those because I only got one camera and just me but that's what a cut is um, a hard cut or a smash cut is a made-up screenwriting thing to say noticeable cut. <laughs> um, there's really no other explanation for what the hell those are. They are nonsense. A jump cut means a cut which is um, jumping a section of time in a shot. Um, that's a jump cut. A jump cut is like um, you show me walking down the street and then you cut a bit of the film out so that I pop to the next part of it. Um, that makes a jump visually in the in the image, um, and those uh, those suggest a certain uh, messing with time. Now the thing about all of these cuts, oh match cut, yes, thank you. I will I'll do match cut. Um, a match cut is when there is um, some form of image in one scene or in one shot, and the cut um, in some way um, allows for a matching of action, like someone is reaching for the doorknob and then in the other shot they are continuing the motion of reaching for the doorknob, or um, that there is a matching of, of images, like a doorway and a doorway, like of two different places and you cut. And so that's matching cuts. Um, a match cut is mainly um, a way of moving through action in a cut, which makes the cut less visible. The main thing about all of this, oh, uh, Citizen Kane had some injury. Yes, let's talk about that. Um, that's actually a very useful point, which I want to bring up. Um, here's the thing about all these cuts. They don't matter in the script. You don't write those in a script. Those are not script elements. A cut is decided by the director and the editor. It has nothing to do with the script. You never, that I can imagine, describe a cut. Um, so. Hi, Vicky Fox. I'm not sure what's like a running animal, but sure. <laughs> yes. Tell me what you meant by that. Um, the main thing about cuts is you don't put them in the script because you're not, they're not writing. writing. They're, they are directing and editing. They are, they are not ever that I can think of written in. 
Um, and, and we will talk about some possible ones um, that you would describe. Um, but honestly, the main thing about cuts is you don't write them. They're not, they're, just leave them out of your script. Don't write cuts. Um, the fade in, fade out, okay? That's a transition that you might use now and then. Fade in and fade out basically suggests beginning or ending a scene. In other words, you're saying we're going to quietly uh, t turn out the lights on this scene, or we are going to turn on the lights of this scene. Um, basically, fade suggests a beginning or ending, because um, you are fading to black is what you're doing, fading to black or fading from black. Um, and and so that the reason you would use that is if you were trying to say, this scene is ending. This sequence is over. We are stopping. We are, we are noticeably stopping. We are calling attention to the fact that we are ending this section of the story. Um, hang on, Mukesh. I will get to this. It's a, that's another good question. Um, ah, yes. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So fade in, fade out. Likewise, a dissolve. A dissolve is when you are essentially fading out of one scene and fading into the other, and they cross those over with no black, so that essentially the image dissolves into the other image. It's an editing transition. And it suggests time passing, um, or some kind of relationship between the two scenes um, or images. Uh, so fade in, fade out, or dissolve, and then um, lastly, there are now and then wipes. A wipe is, is what I do in my lesson videos where the image of the screen literally wipes across or it is a circle that, that comes in or a square. There's lots of different types of wipes, but basically the image is wiping the other image off the screen. Now, here's the thing about all of these transitions. They're none of your business. They're not your problem. Writers don't write those. Almost always, they will actually only be decided in editing. They're not even decided in, in directing, although sometimes they are. But the main thing is they are not really script elements because however you think it should go, the director and the editor are going to decide based on the material they have when they direct and edit. It, in, unless there is a very, very important story element to a dissolve, like you're saying, um, like I once wrote a script where um, the, we were changing time. Um, it's called The, the um, Legends of Jesse Dark, and uh, I have it it's on my website under the section Creative. You'll see you can get a copy, a PDF. It takes place in several different times of this person's life. And every time that I was transitioning from one time to another, going into or out of a flashback, I would do a dissolve where the faces of two people, at the uh, faces of the same person at two different times of their life, so that you would see them both dissolving, um, uh, so that you got you got a a forceful visual reminder that you are changing times. So that was a use of a dissolve. Um, however, other than something like that. You can say fade out all you want. They are not going to do it unless they want to do it. They are going to decide for themselves. They have their own stylistic choices. It is not screenwriting. Screenwriting is about telling the story and the characters, but not trying to tell the editor and the director what to do. If for some reason you want to tell them, that's fine, but that means that you are going to be writing something which is dependent on a thing which may not happen. If you think it's really, really important to have a fade out, sure, write fade out. What you're really saying is, this is winding to a close. I want everyone to be aware of it. Um, hold on. Uh, old movies come to mind. Slow fade out, scene change. Yes, exactly. Uh, yes, this, this we will get to. I heard the screenwriter, it's cut just for all transitions. Uh, you don't write cut. <laughs> what about an hour later? Uh, that's another good one. I'll talk about that. Um, okay. Lawrence of Arabia to boot. Yes, but I, uh, the, the script of Lawrence of Arabia was written in consultation with the director. The director chose the transitions. Hi, Umbra Man. 
So let me uh, just get back to this basic concept, which is these transitions almost always you should not write. You can write it if it's if you imagine it's going to play that way and you want to suggest it. You're basically suggesting it to the director. Um, but but that is that is all there is for transitions. The main thing about transitions, let's go back to this, is here. Let's look at a transition. This is a scene, very quick scene, where Madeline is leaving her office. Okay, it's Madeline's office, five o'clock. So she's leaving the office, and then we have a transition. Now, you could write cut to. However, because the next scene is going to be in the oh, in the elevator. Um, but why would you do that? Why would you spend this is three lines, three lines of your script when you get the blank on either side. Um, you are using up a lot of space for a thing that actually is going to be done no matter what. If you are going from the office to the elevators, you have to cut. There's no way to get there without that, unless you're actually going to follow her down the hall and ring the elevator. It's going to be a cut. So you don't have to say that. It's actually kind of annoying to have cut to all the time, as if there was any other way to get there. All films cut between scenes. Now and then they might do something else that's fancier, but most films at most time cut between scenes. So therefore, you don't have to write it because the fact that you are in one location and then you are going to another location, that tells you there's going to be a cut. The main thing that you're trying to do is describe the scene, describe what's happening to the people. And every time you stop and say, hey, camera dolly, zoom in, cut, dissolve, you are calling attention to yourself as a writer and pretending that you're a director when you're not. And everyone who reads the script who knows anything about scripts knows that. So anyone who reads a script who sees all that stuff says, ah, this is a writer who doesn't understand what writers do in a production. <laughs> and so therefore they say, okay, I guess we'll have to remember that when we're working with them, that we have to treat them a little bit like a simpleton because they don't understand. There's no other way to get from here to there than a cut. Leave it out. Okay, so therefore, don't write cut to. Um, I, I cannot emphasize this enough. This is a personal, in my humble opinion, do not use the transition cut to, because any time that you are going to use it, it's already obvious. And so you are simply wasting space and removing people's attention from the reality of the story. Our main job here is to get people involved in the characters and what they're doing. And everything that you write that reminds them that they're reading a script instead of about real people is bad, <laughs> okay? It's just bad screenwriting. Um, I'm not saying lots of people don't do it, but it's bad screenwriting because the main goal of screenwriting is to get the reader involved in the characters and the story, in the reality of this imaginary moment. Okay. I'm going to quickly check some other questions. What type of cut is called when the sound of... That's called a um, pre-lap or... Um, yeah, I, know, I understand what you're saying. Um, and that actually can come up once again. Let me, let me talk about that in a, in a second. Um, okay. <laughs> yes, yeah, there's certainly that. Um, I often say it's film club workshops. Don't direct it unless the script you're going to direct. Yes, that's absolutely true. Um, but even then, if you're going to direct it, don't direct it on the page. If you're going to direct it, you already have the power. Just tell the story. Um, we shouldn't assume the vision of the director. That is absolutely true. Cinema is so descriptive and elaborate. I love it. I do too. Um, yes, okay. Hand purple, blue piece, hand purple, blue piece. I'm not sure what that means, but thank you. <laughs> Um, okay, if you want to show a relationship, yes, absolutely, and we will talk more about that. Um, but oops, sorry. Um, but the truth is, 
um, the, the thing you should imagine is what is that relationship and how can you show it without talking about an edit? Because edits are not really the best way. Unless, like I said, in, in a, a, scene, a scene where you want to suggest that the imagery is putting the two time transition in front of your face, you can do that. But even as, as a writer who did that, I don't know if the director is really going to do that. Who knows? Um, okay, so um, let me just get on to a couple more little points and then I will answer a lot of these questions. The point is you want to write the emotional or narrative transition, not the filmmaking transition. For example, here, um, I am saying uh, she's heading for the door and then she speaks as she's on her way out. So the thing I'm trying to imply is that she's she's gone. She's she's relaxed. She's calm. She's heading out and she's saying, see you tomorrow, kids. Good day. So that by ending on that, I am ending on the image of her leaving cheerfully. So that's the transition I'm trying to get is what are we leaving on? What are we seeing? I could have written um, the other workers sigh and return to their hard work. So now if I did that, I am end. Oh, you can't see this. Hold on. All right. Um, so here's the thing. Um, if I have this transition and she's heading out the door, OK, and I say, see you tomorrow, kids. Good work today. And she's heading for the door. This transition is in, in your imagination. You are seeing a woman walking out of her office and saying something nice on her way out. So that gives you an emotional way out of the scene. You understand that we're with this woman. We're not with the other workers. We're not with anything else. We're, we're going with her. OK, and she's on her way out. She's fine. In other words, that's the important thing. She's going out because the transition is going to be when she gets into the elevator they are going to, she's going to have an unexpected interruption in her day. So in order to show that, I went to Brenda. In other words, instead of saying Madeline gets into the elevator or the doors open and Madeline gets in, there's a lot of ways I could have written this transition to steer your brain. I chose to start on Brenda because I was basically saying, we were watching one woman and now we're seeing another woman who's waiting in a place. So we are seeing the collision. We are seeing the interruption. OK, I didn't do that with any kind of fancy film description. I just did it by doing a transition of imagery in the brain, in the words. That's a good screenwriting transition, if I may say so myself. As I said, if I ended this way, the others, uh, if I left, she goes out and then we stay on the other workers and they're stuck there, that would have all, then it would be very weird to start on Brenda. It would be like doing an ensemble piece with different characters, not um, the flow of Madeline's story. Does that make sense? Are you understanding what I'm saying? The important thing here is to try to write the emotional or narrative transition, not the filmmaking transition. This is my main message. OK, now, as I've said that, I also think it's really important for you to recognize that um, the 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 um, an entrance or an exit is generally boring, <laughs> especially entrances. OK, watching someone walk into a room and begin a scene is usually very slow. It can be if the point of the scene is that they are arriving someplace, you can do that. But most of the time, you want the transition to be something where things are as close to what's happening as possible. Um, let me just do some quick hellos. OK. Um, hi, Brandon. I am so glad that you are. I'm so glad that you're here. Very nice. I'm really glad that it's helpful. OK, yes. Narrative transitions. Exactly. Two people watching the same program from different locations. Uh, yeah, that could be that. That is a possible one. Um, hi, Donna. Hi, Paolo. Hello, Drumit. Um, thank you so much. Oh, wow. We've got lots of people talking to me. Hi, um, Ronald Moger. Hi. <laughs> to what extent can I state how the start of the next scene looks without um, 
ah, this is a good question. This is ex exactly what I'm saying. Uh, how the start of the next scene looks without, for instance, in the example, I want to start with feet landing in a puzzle, puddle. Should I say that or do they arrive and it's raining? Okay, well, if you are starting with feet landing in a puzzle, a puddle, that's, we could do exactly what I was just showing you. For instance, let's go back to this. Uh, boom, hang on. Let's say that this, the next scene here is exterior, street, day. A young child's feet splash down into a puddle. Um, you can definitely start that way. Kid. Hey, look at me. Their nanny is paying no attention. OK, so the point is, yes, you could start with that, but you would not say we cut to a close up of a puddle. OK, that's what you do not do. <laughs> Don't do this. All right. If you just say a child's feet splash down into a puddle, um, we see the transition. All right. Does that make sense? OK, boom. Um, in general, though, um, you don't want to over direct. You don't want to do the director's job. In that case, if you want to start with a puddle and you and it's part of the flow and it's not going to take a lot of time. Sure. Absolutely. Um, a filmmaking transition. Yes, absolutely. Um, I would be happy to show you that this would be one. OK, for instance, um, and you write fa uh, does, or I'll, some people do smash cut two. Okay, it's even it's even in there. That's terrible. Okay, smash cut two. A, it's meaningless. <laughs> that is a meaningless phrase. What a smash cut is. Smash cuts do not exist. Um, but you could do. Oh wait, let's do. You could do dissolve two. Now. The truth is, un under certain extreme circumstances, yes, you can say that you can put in a dissolve and it might be, might be done. But most of the time, it's not going to be. So try not to write that. That's what I am saying. Um, is there any way to access these live screens? You're on it? Yes, every single one of them is on my channel. Um, Thank you so much, Junior. It is very nice to meet you. Um, yeah, if you go to the channel, uh, let me let me just take a look and, and see what I'm talking about here. If you go to my channel, um, there are different playlists. Uh, one of them is so like if you if you go to the channel and you just uh, go down screen scroll down, you'll see live screen stream classes, and then there's dozens. And then there's ask me almost anything. And there's the screen. All of every live stream I've done is on my channel forever. So yes, just go explore the channel. That is the key. Um, yep, yep. Uh huh. Okay. Entrances and exits are generally boring, strange, and hidden. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Um, what are capital like splash down? Um, that's just a way to to make things noticeable. Um, it's just a, a way to to like say active, busy. Um, OK, um, how do you feel like including we see? I like we see better than I like zoom in or close up or anything else. If you say we see somebody creeping in the background, that's absolutely fine because we do see it. <laughs> We're watching it. That's cool. But the more that you try and describe it as far as our experience, the better. The less you try and control the shot, the better. But now and then you do have to say we see him tapping his fingers, although you can just say he taps his fingers. We'll see it because we're seeing it in the words. That's the key about script writing. If you write, we see him put the wallet in the drawer, you don't need to say that. Just say, he puts the wallet in the drawer. We will see it because you just described it. <laughs> it's the, the camera is in the words. Um, OK. All right, cool, cool, cool. Um, yes, no, it's not every action. It's just the ones you want to go, hey, pay attention to this. 
Um, it's it's irrational and meaningless. It's like bold face in some old comic books. Or you know what it's like? Actually, I was thinking about this. The capitals. Um, if you look at uh, printed uh, or written documents, books, or whatever, from the 1700s, 1600s, in English at least, they capitalize letters randomly. <laughs> it's just like any word they want to have important, they'll put like a capital B bank. You are going to the bank and it's capital B. That's what screenwriting does. Um, it's kind of similar to the Hitchcock mindset of showing in our mind's eye the most important thing relative to the part of the story where um, by describing where our attention rests. Yes, exactly. That will help inform the type of transition. Right, exactly. Um, if I have... You don't. Well, I mean, you, you just... It, it would depend. If you have three criminals giving their version of a crime and they're at three separate places or times when they're giving that, then you would do a scene break. You would do interior, bar, Murray's version of the crime, exterior, park, Edgar's version of the crime, and they, you'd have their talk there. Um, if it's flashbacks, you would describe them as separate flashbacks. Um, it would depend. In the movie Mad Money, I have uh, the entire thing is jumping around in time from uh, the characters being interviewed um, by the police in the police interview room. So there's all these scenes in the interview room, different characters, and you just say, cut to interview room, Murray's interview. Murray says, Joe did the crime. And then you cut to interview room, Phil's interview. Phil says, Murray did the crime. Um, when and what do you capitalize? When you feel like as much as you want, um, as long as it doesn't, you know, it's, it's, it's a... It's a style thing. This capitalized thing is purely irrational style. There is no rule. Some people capitalize actions. Some people capitalize important objects. Uh, it, it just, there is no rule. It's a feeling. It's a way of writing. In some scripts, I capitalize, and in some scripts, I don't. I use none of those capitals. Doesn't matter. Um, okay, let me get back to some of my points about transitions. Uh, one of the most important things, okay, um, the main thing to do is to write towards the story and emotional change, the thing that you're trying to ho hold the character, the uh, audience's eye on in either place. You don't have to describe how we see it filmically. Like I say, Brenda is in the elevator. Well, we're going to have to have a shot in the elevator. There's just no way around that. Um, okay, um, hang on a second. Um, I do not do one-on-one mentoring anymore. I used to, um, but this past year I am trying to do other things and I don't have time anymore, alas. Um, okay, uh, the other thing about transitions is, um, let's just briefly talk about this. This is called the slug line or the scene heading. OK, interior or exterior, place, time. Um, I talk about all of this in the format video, uh, which I will put the description of in the link. But the main thing is do not try to put your transition into these, into the slug line. The slug line is, is just for the information, interior, exterior, location, and time. Do not try to get your... Um, transition in there that is saying like zoom in or something. just don't use those that is not what they are for um, another way that you can do a transition sometimes in um, is is you can decide on a detail for instance um, in in the movie Schindler's List the way we meet Oscar Schindler is a series of, of details of um, him getting dressed the carefully picking out his cufflinks and his tie and put it they're just each so you could describe um uh actually you could even just say um, a series of close-ups and then boom 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 i don't love a series of close-ups but if you want to have it be very brief you can say hands or, or just say um well manicured hands taking cufflinks out of a fine box choosing one pair and putting the others away the finely manicured hair uh, hands uh, tying a tie with a perfect bow. In other words, you describe the details, um, and then you say, Oscar Schindler looks at himself in the mirror. 
um, that is um, one way in. Another way in is the establishing shot. The establishing shot is a tradition of sitcoms. Sitcoms, um, particularly, um, because they were filmed on a soundstage, um, they needed to show the exterior of the building to do the transition from one set to another. Like they're at somebody's apartment, they're going to somebody else's apartment in a different building, they would show what they call an establishing shot. It's just a shot of the outside of the building, a shot of the farmhouse. Um, and that's called an establishing shot. It's not a scene unto itself. It's just the establishing shot for the scene. That's a thing you can do. And in fact, they, a lot of people like you to do it. If you're going to a new place, they want you to do an establishing shot outside. Most of the time in modern films, they're not necessary, but it's weird. Some producers really need them, insist on them. Um, you can also begin a scene by a quick summary of the location. That's absolutely fine. Um, let's take a quick look at uh, that script I was looking at because it's got some of those. All right, so for instance, um, Okay, so this is the beginning here is a description of George sitting at his desk uh, about to do his podcast. Um, and then um, the uh, way out of that scene is he's a description of him walking, he's falling, he's dying. And then we see on the um, now here's a case. He, I'm describing basically a, a cut or a zoom or, or some kind of camera move to get close to the laptop. Um, but I don't say that. All I'm saying here is he twitches, dies, helpless alone. Coffee drips off his table. Now, you're basically going to need to see that in somewhat close up <laughs> and um, to say on the laptop screen, the website, you're going to have to be close enough. So I don't have to say we move in closer. You can, but um, it's not necessary. The transition is the sentence. In other words, I'm not saying we end with the words up close. I just am describing it and we see it in our mind. That is the point. Um, OK, um, what is the difference between blackout, fade out and cut to? The difference are blackout and fade out. A blackout would be a cut to black. Um, in other words, um, if we were here, actually, I can do it. Boom, that was a cut to black, <laughs> uh, except it was actually a slight fade because of the technology. Um, but a fade out is a slow darkening as opposed to a hard cut. And cut to is just a cut between one thing and another. Never, ever write cut to if you can help it. In fact, try not to write blackout or fade out unless you're actually needing a blackout. In other words, a cut to pure black screen. Now and then, if that's a stylistic thing um, or, or is it some kind of scene uh, meaningful in the scene, sure, write it. Um, uh, yes, I have done that already. I will do that again if we have time. Let me get to it. Um, OK. Ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> is it sitting behind his desk or sitting at his desk? Whichever you like. Either one is possible. Hi, Roddy. Um, there is not it is not proper, neither one is correct or incorrect. They're just two different ways of describing the same thing. Um, all right, let me get a, one or two more little thoughts about transitions, and then I will get to your questions. The other really important thing about a transition out of a scene is what is it feeding into? In other words, what is it that's happening at the end of the scene that you want the audience to be seeing in their mind, which is going to be um, either leading into the next thing or in some way providing a mental jump to. For instance, somebody says, I'm going to go, uh, you know, tell the newspaper about this problem before it happens. And then you cut to the newspaper office or you cut to the problem about to happen. And we're thinking, huh, I wonder if he made it in time. Um, the point is that the, the narrative transition, what is the thing that you are trying to get the audience to think about or to compare? One of the big things you can think about is you want them to feel 
the transition. You want them to think, ah, there is a change or a contrast or, or something is happening when we end one thing and go to the other. In a very small way, for instance, in that scene I just showed you, Madeline is leaving her office. She gets into an elevator with this other woman. The fact that I am saying there's another woman there and then Madeline comes in is telling us something is going to happen between this woman and Madeline. We just don't have enough room in script to describe a woman in the elevator if she's not going to do anything. So therefore, the transition is a way of alerting the audience that a new scene is going to involve this woman and the woman we just saw leaving the office. It's all about what is the narrative you are trying to track or bring up a new thing in. Um, hi, Jean. Uh, so it's very, very important that you try to think about the changes or contrasts or narrative links between the two scenes. You don't necessarily have to write them, but simply by ending on one and starting on another, you create the change or the contrast or the link between them. That's the point about a transition in a script, which is very different from a transition on a screen. Screen transitions are done by directors and editors, not by writers. Um, Yes, absolutely. Um, if you have a funny idea for a match cut, for instance, um, <laughs> this is a good one, right? Saying somebody gets stabbed in a cabin and then you cut to a fancy restaurant and someone is using their knife to cut steak and you want to sort of suggest a, a humorous or shocking comparison between the murder and the eating of the meat. Um, or, But the question is, what is that saying? But yes, you absolutely, if you can think of a an image link or image contrast that says something, feel free to write it. They may not use it. Uh, remember, that is not within your control. Um, thank you very much. Hi, Anshul. Um, so the, um, the main thing I want to talk about in transitions is watch and read stuff, especially read scripts, and look for the script transitions. In other words, when, notice how they are ending and beginning scenes, not the shot, the action. In other words, what part of the story are they leaving off on or beginning on? Um, it, is, it is very useful to watch and read with an eye on something technical like how do they do all these transitions? Um, and what you'll think about is not how would I describe what they shoot, because you don't do that, but describe, oh, they're showing this person getting out of a taxi. Cool. So you don't write long moving, you know, dolly shot of getting out. You just say, Joe gets out of the taxi. That's the key. Uh, OK, let me go now to some of the questions you guys had. Um, Citizen Kane transitions. Yes, Citizen Kane had some very interesting transitions. Many of them were visual and not script. I mean, they were script <laughs> scripted because the director was co-writing the script. So he could say, we are going to go in through the, the rainy um, skylight of the cafe. But, but what's really important is that you see the outside of the cafe. It's sad. It's raining. It's unpleasant. This is not, clearly not a big hit show. And then you go into the cafe and this person is sitting alone. That's what you want to write in the transition. You don't write the dolly shot through the, through the skylight. Citizen Kane has fabulous transitions. Now and then there will be one that you would write in, like he, hold, he looks at the newspaper um, and it has a headline about a ship leaving. Cut to the ship is pulling out. That, sure. But then say cut to the ship is pulling out, not cut to wide shot. And don't say cut to. Just say there's, you know, Joe looks at the paper. The paper says, uh, you know, celebrity leaving tonight at, at midnight. And then next scene, the ship is pulling out into the ocean. There you go. You don't have to write cuts. Don't write camera stuff. Um, now, um, uh, Michael has been asking a lot about title transitions. Let's talk about that because um, it does come up now and then. Um, so 
let's say we were going to do um, here. So um, you could do um, title card on black screen. And then you write Tuesday, 4 p.m. And you put it in bold and you make it centered. And anyway, so you can do that. Um, hold on. Well, anyway, um, you can center it. I don't have my centering <laughs> right here. Um, can you do this? Yes. Should you do this? No, it doesn't. You don't have to. It's a stylistic, um, a stylistic flourish. The question is, why would you do it? Why would you call attention? to the time and place, unless that is important in the story. For instance, six days earlier, that's important because there would, it's hard to know that you're going back in time, um, especially short distances of time. It's very hard to see the difference. Um, so if you have something like there's a, a, a man, you know, having a horrible thing happen and then it stops and you have a title card that says six days earlier, um, we are going to then be thinking, ah, this will explain how we got into that situation. Cool. But ordinarily, you do not want to bother the audience with times and dates um, if the time and date isn't extremely relevant to the story. Like if it's going to be that we know, you know, uh, the, the, the big event, the wedding is happening Wednesday at 3 p.m. And then you say like Saturday, 2 p.m. Now we know, okay, they have this much time before the wedding. But unless there's a ticking clock of some kind or an event at certain time or place, you definitely don't want to bother with uh, putting um, times and dates on the screen. Um, it's a thing that sometimes people do to make it seem important, um, but it really should actually be important. Um, script transition will probably be at the tail end. So we'd love to hear scene structure. How can we shape scenes to end? Um, basically, one of the ways is, is what I'm saying. Um, uh, that, that you're trying to think about what is it that I'm trying to um, have the people think about. That's really a, the point of the transition. The, what is the question that is being raised, the problem that must be solved, the declaration that was made, the action that is taken. What you want to do is define the end of the scene with that thing that you want the audience to be focused on. So if it's like when I have... Madeline leaving work, the thing I want to suggest is that she's done with work and that this is a calm, happy ritual, that she's having an end of an ordinary day because she's about to be interrupted. So the point I am trying to make by my transition out is how casual and routine and happy it is for her. So that's how I describe that at the end of the scene. Did they do that in seven? They did the days of the week. They didn't do the times. But since it was about a seven day period, they would do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday as the days showed up. Yes. Um, OK, next question. Could a montage be seen as a double transition? This is an interesting question. Uh, let me go back to it. Let me just call it up here. My goodness, we've had a lot of comments today. Uh, OK, here we are. Boom. Uh, could a montage double as a transition? Yes, absolutely. Um, essentially, a montage is a scene. So what that is is a scene between two scenes. Um, the, the actual definition of a transition is how you go from one shot to another. In other words, at the end of a scene, you can fade, you can cut, you can dissolve. There's only a couple of transitions you can do. I told them earlier, wipe, dissolve, trans uh, fade. Yeah. But the answer is those are not what you write. If you write a montage, you, what you're doing is saying, in between this event and this event, I want you to think about this topic. Montage is a collection of scenes unified by an action or theme. So therefore, for instance, if you want to say people are working hard to build a thing, and you start in the things not built, and you do a montage of them building, and then you see it built, cool. That's that. Yes, you can do that. I don't entirely think of, I mean, it's kind of a transition, but it's not the thing I'm talking about because it's really a montage is a scene into unto itself. Um, 
Okay. Uh, next question. An hour later, yeah, Michael was asking about what about times. Okay. Um, ah, right. Okay. What type of uh, what's the cut called when the sound of the next scene plays in the center? Um, this is a, this is an interesting idea. Um, it's sometimes called a pre-lap, although there's a very technical term. Um, you can do voiceover or we hear um, with V O or O S in the here. Let me show you. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so um, suppose you wanted to say um, uh, here. Boom, boom. Okay. So if for some reason we wanted um, the tax audit topic to like overlap, to flow in, um, huh. oh, sorry, <laughs> uh, this is weird. Sorry about that. Let me see what I can do about that. Uh, ba -boom, ba -boom. For some reason, my screen share, oh, show entire screen, current application. There we go. Okay. So, um, so here I typed in, don't forget that we have this big tack art. This is the sound from another scene bleeding over into the next scene. If, for instance, Brenda was the auditor who was going to be there. But um, the answer is most of, most of the time, that's not um, something you would write. You would generally write, um, it, unless it's, it's a very important uh, overlap, like it has a meaning, like it's, it's in some way foreshadowing something, or uh, generally you don't worry about that in the script. That is something they do in editing. Um, so now and then, um, if a new, like a scene is going to start, it happens more that the last scene, like whatever uh, Madeline is thinking about, um, she's going to be um, raided by the police. And so we hear the voice of the police officer saying, tomorrow we're going to do the raid. And we show Madeline as the voice starts. It's really not something the scriptwriter should be doing. Um, very, very rarely should uh, you be writing um, film technology. Just don't do it. Try to write the story as much as possible. Um, okay. Seven was seven. They did it by sins. Uh, no, I don't believe that's true. I believe they did it by days. There were seven deadly sins and they were each a day, but I believe the transitions, uh, the, the what uh, Michael's asking about is the uh, the time transitions when they started a new day of their investigation. I believe it said Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, but I could, I could be wrong. Uh, this may be a different question. I want to tell the story of one main person, but I'm afraid of getting, um, that is a kind of a big new topic. Um, let me answer that another time. I will try to answer that another time. Um, but the general answer is uh, there's nothing monotonous about one person's story if it's an interesting story. Lots of stories are just one main person. That's not monotonous if things are happening. Basically, the point is make their story interesting. What is interesting about their story? What are we worried about? What are they trying to do? Um, I would suggest you look at uh, this video of mine. Um, that tends to help with keeping things interesting. Um, hello, Jonathan. Um, uh, yes. <laughs> um, okay, now this is, this is interesting. Slaughterhouse-Five, because Sla Slaughterhouse-Five is about a man who has become literally unstuck in time. He keeps on popping back and forth into different parts of his lives. Um, so there are transitions between times. In other words, the end of one scene will be the beginning of a, new, of a jump to a different time, back and forth in time. Um, so there are some fabulous transitions in that between the times. Um, yeah, the main thing about that is that you would be 
first trying to understand what is the importance of the scene and what is connecting or contrasting between them. Once again, you're looking for what links these two scenes or what is contrasting between the two scenes. And that's what you write. You don't write how they shoot it. You write, oh, he's thinking about uh, getting married, cut to his wife is, is being buried. You know, the, the, so the connection is the wife. You're trying to figure out what is the connection between the two scenes or the difference, the contrast, the thing that is not known between the two scenes. The thing is not connecting. Um, so, voiceover is a good way to create an open scene for an adding sense of uncertainty. Um, yes, it can be. Um, once again, I, I urge you to these three things. Think about the emotional or narrative transition more than the filmmaking trick used. Also, you really want to make the change or contrast or link. I'm sorry, I didn't write that in. Or link between the scenes. You want to think about what is it that you are trying to show is different. What is trying to be shown that's interesting of the old and new scene. Um, and the other thing is, please watch and read as many scripts as you can. That's really the key. Um, okay. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, my scripts are all great. <laughs> so um, as far as other people's scripts, um, offhand, I can't think of scripts that I've read that I love the transitions for. Um, but I would say um, the things I am trying to teach you, I try to do in my own scripts. In uh, On my website, you can find um, a section called Creative. In that, you will find several of my scripts. See what you got there. Um, uh, yes, Jay Cattell Cattell. I didn't want to get into the um, into the, the technique of filmmaking because the whole point is I'm trying to get people to not think about the the technique of filmmaking when you're writing the script so much. Think about the technique of script writing, of storytelling, of what you are connecting or contrasting in the changes of the scene. Uh, how do this? I answer that in another live stream. Um, the want changing. Um, I will put a link in the description when I end this video. Give it about ten minutes and then look. You will find the link to hold on. Changing wants. And there was something else I was supposed to link, and I've forgotten what it was. Um, uh, format. Okay. Um, so look, look at, look there, and I get into that there. Yes, objects obviously um, can be used famously uh, in in two thousand and one. Um, hold on, the uh, they they throw the bone up and it transitions to two hundred thousand years later, and it's a spacecraft. If you have a favorite source or finding scripts, um, yeah, the the thing I would say about finding scripts is is this: try to find. Um, a script that has a title page and and ideally it will have a date or a production company name something on the title page if it doesn't have a title page or it doesn't have any other information on the title page it's probably not a real script it's probably a, a transcript there's a lot of people now who make transcripts of movies so they are identical to what you see on the screen that's not a script that's a transcript and it is useless. It is useless to screenwriters. You need to see the actual scripts. So I would say look for scripts PDF. Um, if you find it's different from the finished movie, that's probably a sign it's a good, it's an actual script. And that what you want to do is learn how much they change between the finished script film and the script because it always changes. If you are reading a script and it is identical to the finished film, it's not a script. It's a transcript and it is useless to you. Do not bother with it. Um, you can. It's all, as I've said, the capitalizing thing is a matter of taste, of style. Try it out. See how you like it. Um, uh, let me just quickly see if there's other... Um, uh, here. Uh, 
Yes, the, the main, the, Michael asked if you want to show a relationship between two scenes, and yes, every transition, there should be a relationship between the two scenes. One is taking some information um, that is a, left as a question at one, and the, que the, the question is then pursued in a later scene, or there's information that is going to affect the uh, people in the other scene. Somehow or other, there is a relationship between any two scenes. And what you want to do in your transition, and you're writing the end of one scene and the beginning of the other, is think about what is it that I want the audience to be thinking about or seeing. Um, okay. Uh, and the final question I'm going to answer. Ah, um, ah, it was Roger, and you were talking about how much do you describe. The answer is try to describe a little bit Try to describe in terms of characters and action and and um, setting and emotion. Do not spend a lot of time describing how things are filmed. Um, think about what it is that you are trying to get the audience to start with. What are they going to be interested in? For instance, quickly going to look at some more transitions here in this script. Um, okay. This is something I often end a scene on dialogue. For instance, um, uh, the end of this scene is that Madeline has just heard that her husband has died, her ex-husband, and she says, you're not married. She says, I was for six months, 30 years ago. Now, that's shocking news. This man that has been murdered, um, she hasn't seen in 30 years. So I end with that because it's a way of shocking it's, it's getting the shock. That's not, they're going to end probably on a shot of Madeline, possibly on a shot of Brenda reacting, but probably on Madeline. Um, so instead of saying, like, we watch her thinking about her past or something, I just end on the dialogue. Some directors and some producers are a little thrown by that, but it's really the best way to focus on what's the key to the scene. Um, and then the next scene, I begin by introducing a new character. So I simply start with the character. Character, and I describe him, and then sits at George's desk listening. So now we know who we're looking at, where they are, and what they're doing. Boom. Two sentences. We are in the action. That's my idea of a good transition. <laughs> um, sometimes, let's look at some other ones. Uh, da, 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 da. Sometimes. Okay, once again. Uh, She's looking at the phone. She asks a question. Who the hell is Zena Murano, who has just sent me 12 texts? So, question. Then, cut to Zena Murano. So, that's a transition. Who the hell is this person texting me? I don't know. Boom. Meet the new person. She is looking at her, um, her phone. Staring at her phone. Okay, so that's the transition. Okay, uh, I think you're getting the idea. I hope that would be nice. Um, <laughs> read the fifth element recently. That's interesting. Um, there was a lot that got changed. Uh, yes, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of elements. There's a lot of uh, things that happen in a film that make things change. Sometimes things just don't work, and they have to rethink it. Um, sometimes you can't get the location you wanted, or sometimes. The, the producer says, you know, we have to add this thing in for product placement. There's so many things that go into making a film. Um, and, and so almost all of it is outside of the control of the screenwriter. So don't write film, write story, write characters. Keep us in the story with your descriptions. That's my answer to that. And with that, I, uh, I wish you all well, and I will see you the day after tomorrow, and you should go write something.